So my name is Dr. Wesley Long. I'm the Medical Director of Diagnostic Microbiology at Houston Methodist. I'm also the Medical Director of Pathology Informatics. I've always had interest in biology um, from when I was a young kid. One of my earliest memories uh, is my dad was a CPA, had his own office. Uh, I would go spend time at his office and I would take scotch tape and pick up the lint off of his typewriters and keyboards and the floor and door handles and put them into books of paper and record and log where the samples were from and what was there, which in hindsight is uh, pretty funny as a microbiologist that sort of where I've come from that. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Doing well, how are y'all? Is anything happening, anything going on? No? So the high level history of uh, COVID testing here at Houston Methodist, we really started following uh, the progression of uh, and spread of COVID-19 in China back in January and started making preparations really then uh, so that we were prepared as a laboratory to be able to do testing for COVID uh, in a very rapid fashion. And so initially all of that testing was uh, run, uh, really most of that testing has been developed in our molecular diagnostics lab and then uh, has really blossomed from just our initial uh, in-house assay into a uh, variety of different uh, manufacturers' platforms so that we can do a large volume of COVID-19 testing and be able to turn around those tests uh, generally in 24 hours. So it's been interesting because with COVID-19, one of the things that is associated with the virus is not just the virus itself and the uh, testing for the virus, which we, we play a small role in. But um, one of the other things about the virus is that there's a lot of then secondary bacterial infections, secondary bacterial pneumonias, uh, other types of infections, uh, the infections we see with people that are you know ill for months. And so those are all the types of infections we uh, diagnose here. Really the main things we've learned about the virus so far is that, uh, I mean, the first thing would be observational. We have learned that there do seem to be a fair number of people who are infected who have very mild to no symptoms, uh, which wasn't clear back in January. The other thing we've learned is that although the virus mutates uh, and we study those mutations, thus far we haven't found any mutations that make the virus any more or less severe in individual patients. What really seems to determine most patients' severity of illness is uh, what we would call the host factors or, or the basically that individual's current state of health. So things like age, advanced age, uh, other comorbidities, other chronic health conditions, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, all of those things uh, tend to be what contribute to having worse outcomes from COVID-19. Uh, versus any particular characteristics of the virus itself. So those are probably the two things we've learned. And of course, we're continuing to study, continuing to uh, you know, look at the virus, sequence the virus, and look for potential mutations that might impact therapeutics or vaccine development. Now that we have thousands of people uh, who have been infected, uh, we're starting to see more younger people um, with uh, more serious illness. So it's, it's, that's, as we have more cases, we will see more, more of that. Uh, into the younger ages just, just because of the sheer numbers involved. I think at this point it's still hard to know the long-term effects because the virus has only been around six months. So there's certainly some people that have a very mild illness that seem to get better very quickly. There's some people that seem to struggle with residual symptoms, uh, respiratory symptoms uh, for a long period after they've been infected. And recovered and I think it's going to require a lot of long-term study to get a feel of what really the long-term outcomes are from the infection. The only thing I keep pressing or trying to reiterate to people we are doing everything we can here to deliver care to our patients to be safe you know so we have billboards that say it's safe and smart to see a doctor you can see all of our employees are wearing masks and we are here for you know the health of Houston and Texas, and we're here to do the cultures and perform the work for people who need care. So I, you know, I do hope that if people 
need care for COVID or for non-COVID conditions, that they don't delay seeking that care because of a fear of COVID. Because I think we're doing everything we can to be really the safest hospital um, and the safest place to receive care. And if you need us, come see us because we're here for you.